Hello Concordia community, I'm Dr. Tim Lawman, President and Vice-Chancellor of Concordia University of Edmonton. Uh, I had previously been doing weekly updates and then said I'd be switching to monthly updates, but given the events of the last week, I thought it was time that I did a special video update just to make sure that uh, everything that we're doing here at Concordia to keep our community safe is really clear. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you uh, very much to our faculty and our staff. Uh, to everyone really for your flexibility and for turning on a dime over this past week. You've done it before, but you've done it again now. And, you know, I never fail to be proud of what we can do uh, time and time again. And it, this is in the face of much less than ideal conditions, of course. Uh, I actually find it quite touching. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to our students for your forbearance as we've made some changes over this past week. Uh, we really appreciate you hanging in there. Now, I'll give you a little bit of context uh, for the last week here. We were planning to announce a mandatory vaccination program for January, uh, but the government of Alberta preempted this last week. Uh, since then, we've been in the position of having to respond, of course, to multiple changes in some of the rules and some of the processes. And I really want to provide you with some clarity now. Initially, we were told by government to follow the requirements of the restriction exemption program and to add our own additional restrictions if we wanted to. And we've done that. However, I, I want to be really clear that from this point forward, we are operating under the auspices of Concordia policy. And that is within the parameters of the law and of new restrictions, Concordia has and will continue to determine our own response to the public health emergency we now face. In practice, really, it means that the requirements that I outlined last Thursday have not changed at all. And as a reminder, here are the most important elements of that policy. We are mostly going to be online until October the 4th, at which time we will res resume our face-to-face -face instruction. Now to be allowed on campus after October 4, you'll need to have at least one dose of a Health Canada approved vaccine against COVID-19. Now, because there's a two week waiting period for the vaccine to take full effect, if you get your first shot any time after today, you'll also need to provide the results of a rapid test taken within the past 72 hours to get on campus until your two week period has elapsed. You are responsible for finding, for purchasing and providing the security personnel at the door with the results of your rapid test. So that's any time after today, Monday, September the 20th, you will have to have a rapid test to come onto campus in addition to one shot of the COVID vaccine. On October 25th, you will need to be vaccinated with two shots to be permitted on campus. There's no need for rapid testing, providing you had your second shot any time prior to October 25. Indeed, after October 25, we are not accepting any rapid tests for campus entry. With respect to accommodations, we've had legal advice on this. In fact, we've had legal advice on everything. And we will be expecting rigorous supporting evidence with any accommodation request. They are available only to the few who meet the strict legal criteria for accommodations. Really, there are no loopholes. This is straightforward and it's clear. Our policy applies to our entire community. That means students, employees, volunteers, contractors, board members, everyone. To put simply, if you want to remain part of our community, you need to get vaccinated against COVID. Now for our students, we have moved the date for withdrawal without penalty, uh, except for your deposit and an administration fee. And that date's been moved to tomorrow, Tuesday, September the 21st. And the uh, final time there is 11.59 p.m. So if you withdraw any time after that, you will be subject to the uh, fees, of course, that are outlined in the academic calendar. You can upload proof of your vaccination via online services. For now, pharmacy receipts and proof of vaccination cards, the infamous proof of vaccination cards will all work. But at some point in the future, we are going to be asking all of our community to scan in with their QR codes. I, initi I initiated this policy. Uh, this policy has my full support and it has my full approval. I'm going to finish, though, by thanking the large, silent majority of our community who I know support these measures. We all have the freedom to choose what we do, but in my opinion, being vaccinated is the right choice. It's a choice that demonstrates respect for ourselves and for others, 
a positive choice that will reduce the burden on the healthcare system and society, and that will enable us to all move forward out of this pandemic much more swiftly. I wanna thank those who've done the right thing and who are already vaccinated. Thank you so much. I also want to encourage those who are considering their options to get vaccinated so that you can continue to be a part of our community. I wish you a terrific week. I hope you are safe and healthy and I will of course keep you updated as necessary.